finally, I'd like to introduce Delinda Hanley, who's the news editor and executive director of the Washington Report on Middle East Affairs, and who will give us a more complete picture of what Congress hath wrought. Thank you. So you've heard about the high cost of Israel to our democratic political process. You'll be hearing much more about the costs Americans have paid for the Israel-US relationship. I'm just going to focus on the dollars and good cents. Americans are concerned about domestic is issues as our nation emerges from the 2008 financial crisis. We're worried about unemployment, rising food, fuel, affordable housing, and health care costs. We're also concerned about our aging infrastructure, crumbling roads, bridges, and decaying schools, deteriorating water systems, and electrical power grids. Despite our economic, domestic economic fears, Americans are generous. Many of us believe we should help the poor, not just here at home where we have nearly 50 million Americans living in poverty. We also want to give food and medical assistance to help the hungry and vulnerable, especially children, survive conflicts and crises in the developing world. Most Americans would be surprised to see how little foreign aid our country actually gives as a percentage of our gross domestic product when compared with other nations. Foreign aid is only 1% of our federal budget, but in tough economic times like those we are facing today, foreign aid is sometimes considered to be low-hanging fruit, easy to cut, because it does not directly benefit Americans and we are cutting back on aid compared to previous de decades. I challenge American tax taxpayers to look a lot more closely at who gets 3.1 billion of US foreign aid dollars every year. Do you know that more than 5% of our foreign aid is subsidizing one of the top 10 most powerful nations in the world? Israel, with a population of nearly 8 million people, about the same number of people who live in Hong Kong or New Jersey, is the largest recipient of US foreign aid. And that has been the case for more than a generation. 16 years ago, my dad, Richard Curtis, wrote an article called True Lies About US Aid to Israel for the Washington Report. It could have been written today. Most aid recipients, he said, are de developing nations, which either make their military bases available to the US or have suffered some crippling blow to their abilities to feed their people, he said. Israel, whose troubles arise solely from its unwillingness to give back land it seized in the 1967 war in return for peace with its neighbors, does not fit those criteria. Israel tries to give Americans the impression that they are in grave danger. They face annihilation. Their urgent appeals bring in significant charitable contributions, both from well-meaning evangelical Christians and American Jews. Soft-hearted Americans send US tax-deductible donations to 27,000 nonprofit organizations in order to help the needy, including Jewish immigrants and Israeli soldiers. Who knew that we could get a tax write-off by sending pizzas and sodas to um, Israeli soldiers in tanks and at checkpoints? Birthright Israel sends 37,000 young Jewish people on free 10-day trips to Israel each year. Wealthy Americans donate $660 million a year for these trips, and the students are not permitted to travel to the West Bank, Gaza, or East Jerusalem. Does Israel really need our handouts? Let's compare Israel's economy to other countries. Israel's 2013 per capita gross domestic product was 34,900. That put it below Britain at 37,300 and France at 35,700 and just above the EU at 34,500. According to the National Power Index, Israel's army rank ranks sixth in the world. Israel has nuclear weapons, unlike any of its neighbors. Israel ranks fourth in technological capacity and is among the world's leaders in science. According to Haaretz, Israel's unemployment rate is 6.2%, while America's is 7%, and Europe's 
Average unemployment is 12%. Israel ranks 15 on the UN Development Index, illustrating the high quality of life for Jews living in Israel. Israelis can expect to live until they're 81.8, and Americans' life expectancy is 78.6. Israel's state-funded health care is ranked fourth in the world, and the US is in the bottom of Bloomberg's list of 48 countries. As I mentioned, Israel receives more than 3.1 billion in direct foreign assistance each year, which is roughly one-fifth of Americans' entire foreign aid budget. U.S. Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel recently promised that this aid would not be reduced, even while he listed significant cuts to America's defense budget. In fact, in June 2013, the House Armed Services Committee voted to give Israel an extra half a billion dollars in military aid for missile recept um, interception systems. President Barack Obama boasts that the U.S. has never given so much military aid to Israel as under his presidency. Cheryl MacArthur, the Washington Report's Congress Watch expert, tallies up U.S. aid to Israel for our magazine. As a conservative, defensible accounting of U.S. direct aid to Israel, MacArthur estimates, um, MacArthur's estimate does not include the costs resulting from the U.S. invasion and occupation of Iraq. Hundreds of billions of dollars, which many believe to have been undertaken for the benefit of Israel. For the year 2014, um, Israel has received $3.4 billion from the foreign aid budget and $2 billion in federal loan guarantees. That's 9,315,068 dollars per day, 365 days a year. If you add grants and loans, Israel has received since 1949 a grand total of $134.21 billion, excluding the $10 billion in U.S. government loan guarantees it's drawn to date. And Cheryl MacArthur's calculations are modest. A respected economist, Dr. Thomas Stauffer, estimated that Israel cost the U.S. about $1.6 trillion between 1973 and 2003 alone, more than twice the cost of the Vietnam War. And that's not all. Israel gets some unique benefits. Washington has granted Israel $19 billion in loan guarantees in recent years to make it easier to borrow overseas. Israel gets its aid money at the start of each year, unlike other nations. This means Israel can start earning interest on the money right away. And the US government, which operates at a deficit, must borrow the money to pay Israel and then pay interest on the amount all year long. Israel can use 25% of US aid to buy arms from Israeli companies. Congressional legislation requires us to maintain Israel's qualitative military edge. That means any time another country in the Middle East buys U.S. arms, we have to make sure Israel gets better weapons. We regularly transfer surplus military equipment to Israel. Israel is now storing equipment worth more than $1.2 billion. Well, America also gives $1.5 billion to Egypt's 85 million people. Well, actually, most of that goes directly to Egypt's military for meeting its obligations under the 1979 Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. Jordan's six and a half million people get 660 million a year for keeping peace with their neighbor. Add to, aid to Israel is a subject that rarely makes it into the mainstream media. We were stunned when Walter Pincus who reports on intelligence, defense, and foreign policy for the Washington Post, tackled this normally unmentionable subject. Days after Israel's cabinet cut nearly two million from Israel's own defense budget, on October 18, 2011, Pincus pointed out, if Israel can reduce its defense spending because of domestic economic problems, shouldn't the United States, which must cut military costs because of its major budget deficit, consider reducing its aid to Israel? I'd like to conclude by stating the obvious. The U.S. President and Congress give aid to Israel 
for domestic reasons in order to please Jewish and evangelical Christian voters who are often more pro-Israeli than Israelis. It is mind-boggling that when it comes to Israel, U.S. taxpayers' largesse has no preconditions. Israel has a green light to use American tax revenue for military operations, which destroy Palestinian or Lebanese roads, water tanks, sewage lines, electrical power plants, and police stations, not to mention shops, homes, schools, orchards, and lives. Sometimes Israel demolishes projects like parks, playgrounds, ports, and other vital infrastructure paid for by American taxpayers and donors. It's past time to halt U.S. aid until Israel complies with U.N. resolutions, withdraws from the occupied territories, and makes peace. According to surveys, a growing number of Americans want Israel, Israeli aid levels the same, reduced, or canceled, with the prospect of prolonged fiscal austerity in the United States Overall, American public support for foreign aid may diminish in the years ahead. Economic conditions in the United States should affect future aid to Israel. Cutting off aid to Israel is the logical and economical and ethical thing for Americans to do. Thank you.